Okay, hey, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to do a really quick video just because we missed some topics when it came to uh, states of matter and phase changes of matter. I just want to go over this really quick. As we have learned, there are three states of matter that we are going to go over in this class. Solids, liquids, and gases. Solids have a tight, rigid molecular structure. Uh, this is what gives them their solid shape. While liquids have a loose molecular structure, they have a fixed volume, uh, but variable shape, so they can take the shape of their container. This is because they have a loose molecular structure again. And then finally, gases, they have the most molecular freedom, and they take the shape of whatever container they're in, no matter how big or small it is. So now that we reviewed the different states of matter, let's talk about phase changes, or changing from uh, solid to liquid, or liquid to gas. I'm just gonna walk you through these really quick so that you can have them. So if we are to start out with our solid up at the top and we go solid to liquid, uh, a phase change that goes from solid to liquid is a melting phase change. So let's think about this. We have a really tight molecular structure in our solid. When heat increases, it causes those bonds who are tightly bound together to break up or loosen up some and this creates our liquid. So solid to liquid, melting. Okay, what about uh, liquid to gas? So if we're going to go from liquid to gas, we're going to use vaporization. So in other words, you're making vapors out of that liquid. Think of boiling water, okay? As you boil your water, the uh, molecular structure, that loose bond that the water has, the liquid has, starts to break apart and those gases just go up and they are free to move in whatever container they're in. In other words, the environment, the kitchen, whatever it is. So, Liquid to gas is vaporization. And then gas to solid is deposition. Okay, so think about this. If you get a gas and it turns immediately to a solid, that's what we call deposition. Uh, I don't really have very many examples of that because it's not as common as you would think. So now we've gone one way around the phase change cycle. Let's go back around. Now we're back up at our solids. Let's go solids to gases. Okay, if I take a solid, so for instance, dry ice, you have a solid cube with dry ice and it starts turning into a vapor in front of you, that is going to be called sublimation. Okay, so when we had go from a solid to a gas, that's sublimation. We go from something of really tight molecular structure to something that's super loose and free moving. So now that we're at gases, let's go from gases to liquids. An example of this would be uh, just rain. So think about this, the water cycle. Okay, water evaporates from ponds, goes up in the sky, uh, cools, cools down, uh, then it comes down in the form of rain. This is what we call condensation. You can also think of this as uh, your glass, if you have a cold glass of water or something, and it also has these liquid droplets around the glass. This comes from the gas molecules that are around the glass, and they cool down and they become liquids. So we're seeing the trend as temperature decreases, we see a phase change, or as temperature increases, we see a change from one phase to another. So temperature is being the factor that shows what phase change is happening. So we've gone solid to gas, gas to liquid. Now let's go liquid to solid. This is a pretty easy one. Think of your ice. What happens with an ice cube? You uh, have water, Put it in an ice cube tray or whatever. It gets really cold, it freezes, turns to a solid. This is what we call freezing. Go figure. Um, so, liquid to solid, freezing. You go from a semi-loose molecular structure to a really tight molecular structure. So that's the phase changes we're gonna go over. One more thing before we leave, I need to go over our phase change graph. This is important because we can see it graphically represents how temperature and heat energy are related to a phase. So we see this graph looks kind of like a whole bunch of staircases and it's easy to get um, confused by it. Okay, don't let it confuse you. So what this is gonna be represented is as temperature increases or as we go farther up the graph, the amount of heat energy released is gonna increase. So as we go to the right of the graph, so from left to right. So as we go from bottom to top, temperature increases. And as we go from left to right, heat energy released increases. So 
we are going to start out at the bottom of our graph. Okay, uh, that first diagonal point is the solid of a substance. So what you're going to be given is this kind of graph for all kinds of different substances. And they're going to have different numbers because they change states at different temperatures and release different amounts of energy. But they're all going to look kind of like this. So this first slant up is going to be they're in the solid state. When we plateau off at that first step, that at that point, at that temperature, that is where we're going to have uh, the change from solid to liquid. In other words, the melting point. Or if we're going backwards, okay, that would be the freezing point. So this graph can go either way. So if we're going forwards, this is the melting point. If we're going backwards, this is the freezing point. So now we're on the second plateau. Okay, we start going up uh, the second slant. Okay, now we're in the liquid state. So we have fully come from solid, now we're at liquids. Okay, as we go up, as temperature increases, as we are liquids, we're eventually going to level out and change to another state. Okay, this next plateau is the phase change from liquids to gases. This is going to be your vaporization if you're going forward or condensation if you're going backwards. Okay, so first slant, solid, then we go to uh, melting and freezing as your first flat point. Then second slant, liquids, second flat point, uh, vaporization or condensation. And then our final slant up is gases. So now we can see the different phase changes and see that where t at certain temperatures, like numbers we put onto this graph, certain temperatures uh, where those phase changes occur. Uh, what you need to get from this graph is be able to understand when you see it, it is a phase change graph and the plateaus or the flattened out areas that are not slanted, those are the phase changes. Those are not the solid, liquid, and gas parts. The slanted parts are the solid, liquids, and gases. And saying all that, I hope this helped you out. I tried to keep it pretty short uh, dealing with phase changes and how to no different graphs and different ways to understand what happens in phase changes. Uh, in saying all that, keep up the good work in the class and see you next time.